Café Society in London. Or Berlin, Paris, New York, Toronto, Tokyo. The spread of the big coffee chains has become one of globalization's most powerful icons, luring customers with an exotic range of cappuccinos, espressos, mochas, and blends of coffee from far-flung climes. Coffee is one of the most traded commodities in the world, a major cash crop for many poor developing countries trying to trade their way out of poverty. Coffee promises to increase developing countries' share of income from agriculture on world markets, in line with Millennium Development Goal No. 8's commitment to a global partnership for development. But the international coffee industry is in crisis, and many coffee-producing countries are facing disaster. This LIFE program explores the reasons why and some of the possible solutions. According to the International Coffee Organization, there are almost 7 billion kilograms of coffee produced every year in countries like Brazil, Jamaica, Kenya, Uganda, Guatemala, Honduras, Nepal, Mexico, Vietnam and Ethiopia. Coffee is considered to be the second largest traded commodity in the world after oil. Indeed, uh, we estimate that uh, more than $85 billion are involved in the annual trade uh, of coffee. But the price coffee drinkers pay for their cappuccinos and lattes bears little relation to the prices paid to the farmers who actually grow the beans. Over the last six years, coffee-producing countries have seen their earnings from the coffee market fall by a fifth, from seven and a half to around six billion dollars. Today's coffee farmers, there are an estimated 25 million of them, receive less than one percent of the price of a cup of coffee sold in a coffee bar. Why not you get it a more? I mean, no. <coughs> we are very worried about the crisis. If this goes on, we will lose everything. In the past, all children went to school, but nowadays, half of them have to stay at home because we cannot pay anymore. There's no work anywhere because of the situation with coffee, which isn't worth anything, and the harvest has dropped off. This coffee problem has been a big problem for both me and my children. It's caused us a great deal of instability. The crisis has already halved the number of people working full-time in coffee farming in Central America. In the current buyer's market, the price coffee farmers in many countries are getting for their coffee doesn't cover their production costs. Coffee farmers who grow the coffee, who pick it and sell it on, gain just four cents out of every dollar of coffee that is sold on the supermarket shelves. Meanwhile, the supermarkets and the four giant roasters of coffee gain the great lion's share of the, of the dollar price that's sold on those, on those supermarket shelves. At the heart of the crisis in the coffee industry today is overproduction. From 1975 until 1989, coffee prices remained relatively stable. So did the supply and demand for coffee beans, monitored by the International Coffee Agreement, which helped guarantee coffee farmers their livelihood. But in 1989, the International Coffee Agreement broke down, ending the 27-year deal between coffee-producing countries, which had regulated the supply and quality of coffee beans coming onto the world market. Since then, it's been a free-for-all with new, lower-cost producers entering the market, leading to overproduction, a wider variety of poorer quality coffees competing for sales, a 50% reduction in the international price for coffee, and, on top of all this, an apparent downturn in the amount of coffee being drunk in the US and parts of Europe. There have been winners as well as losers. Vietnam, for example, sees the opportunities opened up by deregulation to become a major player in the global coffee market. In the late 1980s, Vietnam produced just 1.5 million bags of coffee a year, statistically a tiny amount. But helped by government subsidies, mainly to small farmers with low production costs, Vietnam increased its coffee production 10 times over. It now produces, in an overproduced market, up to 15 million bags per annum. In 10 years, it's become the second biggest coffee-producing country in the world. 